So let's look at something that's really exciting and a lot of fun. Logo animation with Affinity and Apple Motion. Now this is using graphics designed with Affinity Design Designer or Affinity Photo and putting those into Apple Motion. A fantastic little program for animating uh, things like intros to movies and things like that. You'll see it coming up very soon. So the first thing we need is a logo. So we'll need a logo and we can create that if we if you don't have one already using Affinity Photo or Affinity Designer. I'd encourage you to follow along. It's that easy. I need a transparent background logo. So I've done one in Photo and one in Designer. Oh, choices, choices. I think I'll use the Designer version. It's um it's kind of got a metal effect that I put on it. And that's also built into Designer, I might add. That's one of the styles that are in there. Free to use. Brilliant. The logo to use in the motion example. That's the website name. It's Metal Texture and Transparent Background. And you can see it there. Beautiful. So here we are in Apple Motion and ready to open a new project. Now, like all big programs, and this is quite a complex program, just like the Affinity ones, there seems like a million moving parts. But really, hmm, it's very simple. You can do Final Cut Pro transitions, generators, titles, or effects, but we're just doing a motion project. As most of my YouTube videos are done in 25 frames a second, Let's ensure that I have that set. And you can see up the top right hand side, it's broadcast HD version at 1080 and frame rate is 25 frames a second. That's kind of standard video if you're looking at that and wondering and scratching your chin and thinking, hmm, what's he talking about? I've got the seconds set at four. It's a four second duration. And you think, whoa, that's not very long. But it is just a transition. This is one of those things you see flick on and flick off when you're watching a movie. The first thing is to drop in my logo image. I've opened up the project, of course, blank screen. Everything's there except the logo. Now I've just dropped that in. The original image is way too big. So there's two ways of reducing the size. One, you can go up to the top there where it says fit reduce the whole thing by 20 to 25 percent then grab the corners and drag it in a lot of messing about um, but sometimes it's just as easy as the other way because there is as with everything another way use the scale slider which is over the left hand side you can see the properties turns blue there if you click on properties and in there you can reduce the size so it's not so gigantic. I scaled it down to 63% there. Now I suspect, well actually 78. Um, I suspect that's not quite right because I'd already reduced the whole thing by 25% and dragged it around to start with. So make up your mind with that one. Use one size or the other. But it fits neatly in the editing screen there. You can use either method. Six of one and half a dozen of the other. Now, we need to apply a behavior. They're called behaviors, the little things that slide into the screen, bounce up and down, flash on and flash off. They're called behaviors, and we've got to apply one to this layer first. So go over to the behavior panel, select parameter, and select overshoot. And you can see it starts up near untitled, right at the top of the screen, because I haven't yet given this project a title. Now apply the overshoot then drag it back to just one second. Now you can see in the time bar there there's Robert Chalmers then there's another line it's got a capital T there just under that you can see a one colon zero zero that's one second and you can see it's out there the word overshoot in a sort of a dark blue line and over the left hand side you've got a panel called overshoot so one second out of four is not very long, but that's okay, that's just what we want. Next, in behaviors, select 
in behaviors apply to to tell it where we're applying the behavior to. Now apply to, transform, scale, all. Doesn't matter what's in that list, we're applying it to everything. X's and Y's and Z's, the whole lot. So everything gets this applied to it. Very simple. Now we can adjust some of the behavior. We want it to start from almost invisible and come out to full size. So you can set the start value to minus 34 or thereabouts. Now this can be a bit tricky this one. I think it may depend on the version of motion that you're using too. However, the logo should start very small with the playhead right at the left. I had minimum success, I must say, adjusting the start value there and getting the thing to scale. But that's okay. It works out in the end. When you move the playhead to the right, you will see a subtle bounce happening to the logo. So you drag that playhead along just like you do in anything else and the logo will bounce. Click the play button and you will see the effect much clearer. And you think, well, that's not much, just gives a bit of a bounce. But you can increase the number of bounces by increasing the cycles number slightly. Don't go crazy with this, adjust it to suit. And you can see I've got some of the settings in there. By adjusting the ramp duration, cycles and other options, you can get it to look just how you want it. Now I settled on these values and I've enlarged it slightly there so you can see it. Those values actually worked. The next step is to add a twirl distortion where the text actually twirls around a little bit. So head over to filters, the next one to behaviors, select filters, distortion and twirl and it'll put another purpley blue bar underneath or above actually where we've got overshoot you've got twirl. Now this is a little complex if you get into this you may not get into motion I'm actually demonstrating the use of affinity um, design within motion but how simple it really is. Now we can adjust the rate of twirl as well as setting the keyframes in the keyframe editor. A keyframe is where something happens as the video is sliding through the timeline it'll hit a key frame and it'll cause something to happen. We need probably seven key frames here at points where we can adjust the amount of twirl. It's a good idea to uncheck the overshoot for the moment. You can see there's a little blue box there with a tick in it. That's fairly familiar to us all. Just untick the box. You can turn it on again later. <laughs> Don't forget to turn it on otherwise you'll be wondering what on earth is happening to your logo? Adjust the 12 values. Now I've got it here starting at 0 and ending on 0. The keyframe 1 is 0. Then you've got 17, 23, minus 13, 10, minus 6 and 0. Now adjust these twirl effects to suit your own text because mine's two words with a hyphen and a full stop and the word UK, Robert Chalmers UK. That's okay. Adjust to suit. But you can see you've got a keyframe editor in that bottom window. Now you should be able to find that. It's got a pencil there and it's got a blue, looks like an arrow and a square with a white square inside it, etc, etc. Turn on the keyframe editor and you get that green zigzag line in there depending on where your keyframes are. You can add keyframes. As this is not an in-depth tutorial in using motion, fiddle with that if you care to to find out how it works. It's fairly simple once you've had a couple of goes at it. And like everything, it's not the only way you can do it. But that's the key and you can see that I've got here when you export the finished motion movie now make sure you select Apple ProRes 4444 as the export type. I could have put an image there but you'll find it. When you have an alpha channel and can overlay the effects over movie, over a movie is why you're doing that. 
If you don't use Apple ProRes and 4.4s, you won't have an alpha channel. In other words, a transparent background. You can see robertcharmers.uk is overlaying um, the funny little uh, cartoon girl that I found on, I think it was one of the Facebook groups one time. Tricky little image. I don't know whose it was or whose it is, but if you see it, yell out, say hi. Now, the finished clip is next. This will show you what it does. And that's all there is to it. A little sample of the logo overlaying the image. Now you have a new option to add to your kit of tools for Affinity Design or Affinity uh, Photo or any kind of design in Affinity. Apple Motion I might add if you do want to purchase it and play around with it you get it from the Apple Store, um, the App Store and I don't think it's all that expensive. It's about 50 bucks I think. Might even be slightly less. Thanks for watching.